Welcome back to the Beijing Ta, everybody. I think this is such a great topic for this time of year. It's the holidays, right? Everybody's happy, but what if you don't feel that way? Dr. Reedy is here. He is a marriage and family therapist. How do you counsel patients when they say to you, "I'm supposed to be this way during the holidays, and I, I、right. don't feel it"? You know, I think one of the biggest barriers is that we have expectations going in, like we should be happy, and I, I think people expect that of us. And I think for what, what I try to help people with is just embrace what it is. Sometimes it's, it's a time to remember losses that we've had during the year and changes during the year. And so, if we can embrace wholeness, if we can move through all the feelings that we have, we can also connect to the joy, to the gratitude, to the other feelings in our life. But if we just try to be happy, we're going to end up really frustrated during the holiday season. You said the word wholeness. How do you embrace that? What is that? It's learning how to feel everything. I think a lot of times in our culture, we just try to feel the good, the positive, the happy, and when we shave off. The, the sadness. We also lose some of the happiness that it's connected to. Our grief is connected to our love, right? Our、yes. sadness is connected to the people that we care about and, and and what's been in our lives. So if we learn to feel everything, then we can learn to feel the joy as well as the pain. I think that's so interesting. You say that because you're right. So many of us say, "Shut those feelings right, out. Right. Just feel happy,"、yep. and that doesn't work. Family gatherings are going to be happening、yeah. or are happening. How do you deal with those this time of year? Well, my therapist calls these an elevator day, which means that we're going to regress often. We go back to that young place, and so if we can be kind to ourselves, if we can try to stay grounded in that idea that where we've grown up. We we belong, we matter, and we're not that little child anymore who's trying to prove themselves or get love. I think that can be a helpful way to approach it. So kindness toward ourselves, compassion toward ourselves, recognizing even on the front end that we might have regressive feelings and start acting like the twelve year old boy that was tricked by his older brother all the time. Is that funny that we all do that? I know. We go back to that place when we were young、right. and we're with our family. Right. All right. Let's tackle gift giving. There's such a pressure、right. out there to give this or that. How do you handle that as a family the right way? Right. You know, I think for me the most important thing to remember is that abundance doesn't lead to gratitude. And I think as parents we try to give our, our children enough so that they'll be happy, and we put a lot of pressure on ourselves. And sometimes financial stress can add to our stress with that.、Mm-hmm. And so. When we realize that gratitude in our program, the students that work with us in our wellness therapy program, what we realize is that having very little sometimes again helps you to feel grateful for everything. And so, abundance is not equal to or does not lead to gratitude.、And、that's an important thing to remember. Is gift giving about us, or is it actually about our kids? I mean, do we、right. do what? I mean, are we trying to make ourselves feel better by the gifts we give?、Right. I, I think that's a great question, and I think giving a gift is giving it without expectation. And if we're giving it so that they'll Be grateful that they'll think we're a great parent. It's not really a gift, is it? It's an exchange for something in return. So a gift is ideally an expression of our love, and, and、mm-hmm. it goes out. Should you be having these conversations with your kids? Is that what you're counseling? You know, I think what I'm counseling more is for parents to learn to listen. I had a teacher ask me recently, "Why don't you go to schools and teach teachers how to deal with today's youth?" And I said, "I just teach people how to listen. The child will tell you everything you need to know about them." And we're not doing that. No, we're, too busy,、right. we're too busy talking. We're too busy talking. We think we have something to、listening. say.、Right. Okay, so speaking of talking, so many sad things going on in the news right now. If you turned on, it turned it on、right. this morning. Unindated, your kids are seeing this.、Right. They're walking by, whether they're not actively watching. How do you have hope this holiday season? How do you teach them to have hope with everything going on? I think two thoughts I have about that. One is this listening thing, learning to listen to and contain. That's what we call it, containing their fears, being confident. Enough to be able to listen to their pain, to their to their sadness, and I think for us, for me, the biggest difference we can make is if we focus on something we can't control.、And、the problem with the news is there's so much outside of our control, but we can make a difference today to a neighbor, to a coworker, to our own children. And so, if we focus on what we can control and the difference and the love that we can share, we'll turn that sadness and fear into hope. I like that. Should you talk to your kids about what's happening? I think you can listen and ask questions. And I think that they should take the lead with it. And if you sense something, if they, you you see that they've heard about it, or you know that they've heard about it, asking questions and listening. I don't think we need to do a lot of leading in that area and, and educating them. They don't need to know about that.、Mm-hmm. But I think we can set up a, a context where listening and it's safe to feel and talk about anything yeah, you need to talk that's about. That's such great advice. What are you hearing the most from people that you counsel this time of year? What are we struggling with right now? You know, really, it's depression. I think people come into this and they feel guilty for feeling depressed. They put pressure on themselves. The greatest suffering that I see is that we expect ourselves to feel something that we don't, and it's okay to feel sad, and it's okay to struggle, and it's okay to have a difficult time. And what we can do for them, if we have somebody in our family, is allow them to show up any way they show up. 
If they show up sad, we're there with them in their sadness. If we need them to be happy, that's going to create an environment that's not going to work for anybody. And then you get all those strange family discussions and arguing. I love that you said that because that was my next question. If you do know someone struggling during the holidays, what do you say? What do you say at that family gathering? Yeah. Just just be there for them? I think listen. I, again, listen. I know I go back to it. Yeah. But I think we always think that we have to do something to them. And then it's broken. Being mm-hmm. sad is not broken. Feeling grief is not broken. Feeling like you don't fit in. Is, is something that if somebody feels that you can just listen to that, allow them to show up as they are, and then they'll feel safe. And then they can move through the feeling and reconnect to the joy and, and all this, all the wonderful things in their life. Dr. Reedy, love having you on the show. Thank He's you. from Evoke uh, Therapy.com. Go to our website and we will link you to all of his information. Good for Utah.com slash GTU. It is right there. Thank you so much Thank you. for being here. Brian.